So this is from Michael Sidios, and he says, it was an intentional foul. So I think we're going back to, you know, the Darian Trammell foul. He held him. He held him. And that was a ticky tack. He didn't hurt him. He didn't knock him down. It looked like he got beat on the play and he brushed him. But as he brushed him, you just watch the replay. If you can get it in slow motion, you will see Trammell's, the side of, side of his jersey gets pulled. Mm -hmm. That's a foul. Now, was a ticky tack compared to the on court violence we saw for 55 minutes? No, it was, it was not that nature of a foul. But most everybody, uh, I think, all the analysts of the opinion, yeah, that was a foul. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a foul. You hate to have to call a foul at that moment in the game, but it was the right call. Um, now, you know, we, we I was really worried because the la last year when they lost to Creighton, they had that nine-point lead with two minutes left, and they went to overtime and then lost it in OT. And that's what happened in the Arkansas game in Maui, and I didn't want that to happen again. And, and so the fact that they were able to, you know, and when Darion missed that first free throw, it was like, oh, my God. So thank goodness he hit that second. And then, you know, it got goofy there in the last 1.4 seconds, but uh, it was a foul. Okay, next question. We all agree on that. Okay, so uh, this is from uh, Steve Zach Botsford. He said, San Diego State has been playing great. Who's the most impactful player so far in the tournament for the Aztecs? I think it's, it's a collection. You know, we're always looking for heroes. Well, one night, it's A.G. Rope. And what he does coming off the bench, it changes the chemistry of the game. The Creighton game, they would not have been there had it not been for Nathan Mensah raising his hand and doing what he did in about a five-minute window at the start of the second half to trigger the comeback and what he did in the final 90 seconds. But heroes could be Seiko. Adam Adam could go five for five shooting from threes. There's not been a lot of consistency there. Um, you know, Jaden Ledee puts his hand up. He goes in and he gives them 12 minutes of big boy basketball when they desperately needed it. They have so many guys who contribute. It's just, to me, it's it's not a team of stars, but collectively, they are better than any of them can be individually. And that that's quite a, a, a tribute to the coaching staff to be able to coach each of these guys up, build their strengths, so that when you go to a guy, there's not a drop-off in productivity. There might be something different that that guy presents coming off the bench, but it's nine deep and it's nine really good role players. Well, it's kind of like their defense. You know, they're so well coached that the five guys act like a swarm and they, and they know what their role is and they know how to play off the other four teammates. So they know how to shut down just about every possible play that the offense is bringing them. Uh, but yeah, this team, it's like every night it's someone different. You know, and we, you know, we kind of were up and down with them a little bit in the regular season. They were kind of streaky shooters, but when Darion Trammell was cold and Adam Seiko hits like seven, three point shots in a game. And when, you know, Nathan Mensa might not be having much offense, it's Jaden Ledee, but even Mensa in the Creighton game, he was hitting jump shots from the elbow. So every one of these guys, great. And, you know, there, this was commented uh, in one of the press conferences, I think, where, you know, they have nine guys, but they rotate them. Nobody gets like really more than 30 minutes, but there, there are no egos. It's not like the guy, when he gets benched, he has to get stroked by the coaches and kind of, you know, massage his ego. Everyone understands that when they come out, someone else is going in and it's for the team, the team to win. And again, that's Fisher, right? The team, the team, the team. So uh, it's just fabulous how this is all working out. So, I mean, this is awesome. I, th I think the bottom line is that when they recruit you, they tell you, you can't come here unless you can play defense. Oh, yeah. And defense is a selfless part of the game. It's me versus you, body banging, hands, mm -hmm. and all the intricate things that they do to disrupt you with the ball. That's selfless. That's you do it because it's part of the job. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the kind of kid that they recruit. And they, I'm sure they could get every type of transfer in the world to come in here. But if you don't want to play defense, John, you'll be wearing somebody else's colors and then we're going to body bag you. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it, these guys take pride in their defense. I mean, that's what Micah Parrish did in Oakland. That's what Darion Trammell did in Seattle. These guys were defensive stars um, and they kind of wear it as a badge of honor. And I think that's just so fabulous. So let's move on here. We got another comment here from Tracy Wells and she says the whole team are heroes. 
the whole team. You know, it even seems like even the guys that don't play on the bench, you know, like Miles Bird, I mean, they're there emotionally with the team. It's it's really a, a, a family that they've built. Yeah, they, and collectively, like I say, I think collectively as a team, they're better than any of them individually. And I just think the group is what has allowed them to get 31 wins this season. And they got two more games to play. Just amazing. Next question. Okay. So uh, let's, let's move on to some of the, um, the YouTube comments. Cause we got some really good ones here. And uh, this is uh, from GOA 69 um, talking about since the San Diego state Aztecs will, will bring proper combat <laughs> to the Al- Alabama Crimson Tide. You know, this is, on the preview show that we did before the Friday win at Alabama. Yeah. Low tide, low tide has arrived in Tuscaloosa. <laughs> uh, red tide, uh, San Diego state mugged them. And I, I think John and I both agree. Southeastern conference is a place for warriors that that's, that's really good basketball. That's really physical basketball. And I just thought as the game wore on Alabama, John, they wanted nothing to do with mortal combat. And Brandon Miller just got taken out of the game. And this is a 6'9", gifted athlete, runs the floor, wide variety of shots, pretty good passer. And they just kept banging him. And his just game went away. He was 3 for 21. Mm -hmm. Player of the year, 3 for 21 shooting the basketball. And Bama, 11% from the three-point line. Think about that. You don't see those kind of statistics. Ever. Yeah, not ever. And you think about the SEC, you think of football and the big tough guys that they've got, you know, on the offensive and defensive line. And here it is now the Aztecs out tough in the SEC. I mean, you got to love that line. Yeah, very much so. Think about the statistics. San Diego State, John, has now played four games in postseason. The opponents in these tournament games, this is the best, the best of the best in college basketball. The opponents collectively are shooting 36% against San Diego State in the four tournament games. Incredible. From the arc, where everybody's got strokers now, everybody can shoot the three. Opponents, 18% from wow. the three point line wow. when you look at STSU and a guy wearing red and black coming at you. That's and a, this, this is not a, this just didn't happen in one game. They've done it every game they've played in the four here in March Madness, just like they do it for virtually the entire season of the Mountain West Conference. Unbelievable. And they're holding them to season low points. I mean, this is just amazing. Here's another comment from the YouTube uh, from Will Brazi. He says, go Aztecs. Great win. Miss you, Hacksaw. Well, we're here Monday <laughs> bonus coverage, Thursday regular. And then, of course, you can sample what I write. Every day of the week, uh, yeah, it's really a cool time to do sports talk in the in the venue that we do it now here. Yeah, so let's move on here. We got another comment, and this is about the whole San Diego State no respect. And Ricardo Olivo just says respect. That was his only comment on YouTube. Have the Aztecs earned it? Do you think they're they're legit on the national stage? Ricardo O, just think about this: the first weekend of the tournament when they played Charleston. The guys on CBS, the panel. Here we are, pregame show, going to the opening throw-in. COC versus SDSU. Charles Barkley and those guys, all they talked about was Charleston. Not one sentence, not one mention. (laughs) And the Aztecs choked them off. Mm -hmm. Then we get to the second game that first weekend, and they're playing Furman. Every one of those guys picked Furman. And they talked about Furman's threes and Furman's coach and their history of Furman and Frank Selvey in a 100-point game way back in the day at Furman. Nobody talks San Diego State. Now, after that game, holy cow, you talk about the table getting flipped over and Charles Barkley mumbling and talking about San Diego State's level of defense and Kenny Smith and Clark Kellogg and Greg Gumbel. Now everybody's on the bandwagon. They pay attention to what's going on here, guys. We I don't think anybody paid attention at San Diego State and the success they've had not just this year, but all the 30 win seasons, et cetera. So they have finally, they really finally, Ricardo, earned respect. Yeah, well, but still, even though they earned the respect after getting to the Sweet 16, even though they earned respect after beating Alabama, when they go into the Creighton game, they were going around the, you know, the shoehorn there at CBS asking who you pick in Creighton or, or the Aztecs. And every one of them picked Creighton except Kenny the Jet Smith. And I think he picked San Diego State just to be different than the other three. So, um, yeah, you know, you, you get respect sort of, but then they kind of revert back. Hey, Creighton's a Big East team. You know, that, that's a team we can count on, we can rely on. But man, the Aztecs just keep 
um, you know, they, they keep shutting down the doubters. They, they keep, you know, just telling people we have a winning program here. They, they didn't believe, but the Aztec players believed. Sir Charles had a great career at Auburn. If Auburn's team had to play San Diego State's defense this year, Sir Charles might be frustrated too. <laughs> yeah, you would. The Next round topic. mound of rebound. All right, let's move on here. We got uh, uh, from JL, and he says, who cares about respect when you can play the underdog? We'll earn respect if we go deep into the tourney, and maybe we'll save the last dance. This is maybe a prediction. This comment was, was made a few days ago. 335 teams play Division I basketball. San Diego State is now one of the four that still will take three-point shots and play defense this coming weekend. Just think of that accomplishment. And I, I think back to all the years I've been here, and I've been in San Diego since 1987, and I jumped on board, and I, was, I did Aztec football and basketball for a group of years when they were on our station. And, you know, I just remember San Diego State basketball when it was hopeless. And I remember Dr. Fred Miller saying, we're going to fix this basketball program. He was the, the AD when I got here. And he had been at Arizona State when I was there doing the Sun Devils. And they tried really hard. and They just never made any progress. And, you know, they, they went through a litany of coaches. And they, they tried it with Tony Fuller, who had done a nice job at Pepperdine. And that didn't work. And then they went and, and they, they got Fred Trenkel, a JUCO coach from Idaho, brought these players in. And the last we saw, he was crying at the press conference where he got fired after four and 22 season. He was blaming us in the media for the failures <laughs> of the program. And then they, and then they stole Jim Brandenburg from Wyoming. And I thought this is a really good hire, good track record. He came here and retired while he was on the job. And that, that was a messy year or two and he was gone. And then, then here comes Fisher and here comes uh, Dutcher and look at where we are now. So they've gone from the dark, dirty, empty, dank Peterson gym to the empty San Diego sports arena to where they are playing on the national stage. It is so cool to see what this program has become. And now they've laid a foundation. They just got to continue to go get more bricks and continue to build it. Once this, this group of seven takes the uniform off for the final time next Monday. Yeah, they're going to reload. I have confidence in the future, but right now they're in the final four. I mean, can you believe that? In the final four, I mean, this program was was a disaster in the 1990s. It was 353 teams in D1. They were probably number 353. And now they're in the final four. I mean, this is incredible. I mean, unbelievable. Listen, we hope you've enjoyed our bonus podcast on a Monday. 